Oh, hey. If you haven't guessed it by now, today's video is about fishing, specifically backcountry fishing. And, uh, you know, a lot of people watch my channel will uh, watch it because of the JMT references. So this is aimed at the JMT, but it will, this, these techniques will work in a lot of places in the Sierra. Uh, however, what I use will vary from what other people use. Uh, so don't stick stri strictly to these techniques. These work for me. Uh, in my youth, I used to backpack a lot uh, to, to catch fish, to get into backcountry places where the fishing was good. But as I get older, uh, I, fishing is something to do when I'm backpacking. I still have trips where I go out and target specific lakes where I know big fish are to try and catch fish. But most of the fish on the JMT, we were looking at eight, eight to 12 inches, even smaller, six inches in a lot of places. But one thing you want to keep in mind is they're full of protein. So uh, they're worthwhile to catch. However, there's a penalty because you have to carry carry gear to go up there. So I'm going to go over some basic techniques and uh, what gear I use. Here's one right here. This is one of my favorite lures for the Sierra. This is known as a Panther Martin. There's different colors. There's yellow with green spots. This is a black with yellow spots. These blades can be black or silver or gold. I like this color. Uh, if you do use spinners this is a, known as a spinner which you are going to use a spinning rod with you need to use a swivel because they spin the lures uh, action on this is spinning in the water so if you don't use one of these swivels your line will, will twist and you'll have a mess and soon you won't have a line at all and your trip will be done as far as the fishing portion of it is so panther martins i'll show you some other gear uh this is a five foot rod lightweight I would bring this hiking. This happens to be one of my favorite brands because I'm hard on gear. This is an ugly stick. And it's a five foot uh, graphite rod. I'm not into spending thousands of dollars on fishing gear. These, this rod's about 35 bucks. Uh, and one of the reasons people don't catch fish, especially on these backcountry lakes, is they use too heavy of a line. With these smaller fish, you're gonna be using four pound test, even two pound test in some places. Just four pound test is about the sweet spot. And I'll use, I'll bring leader material and fish after my swivel, I'll sometimes put two pound test. So, which has two effects. If I snag that portion, only the rock keeps the, the two pound test and the rest of my gear is still there. However, some of these fish keep the line too, so. so know how to use your your uh, uh, what you call it, your drag so you should be able to pull out line pretty easy so when a fish pulls hard it doesn't break your line I'm not gonna go into fishing techniques too much just gear so this to me is still too heavy I have a lighter rod that I'm gonna show you in a sec as far as reels smallest one you can find this is one I really like again check them out you can you don't have to go expensive this is about a $35 rod this is a Fluger uh, real, I mean. Fluger Presidential. Seven balls bearings. So I don't know if that means anything to you. But uh, super lightweight. I pair this with a different rod when I go backpacking. There's telescopic rods out there. Uh, I don't like them. They break. They're not that great. I use uh, this little, it's a, it's, it's a cheap rod too. It's a Daiwa Spinmatic. And I didn't find this in the store, I had to go online for it. So it's four pieces. As you can see, it's really short, fits in your pack really nicely, and it's, it's graphite. Super, super light. I like these, they piece together like this. I like these a lot better than the telescopic rods. You get a better action with them. They hook a big fish. And I want to reinforce this because it's happened to me. Before you consider bringing a bunch of fishing gear, I fish all the time in the backcountry, and we almost always eat fish if we go out for three or more days. I don't rely on them, but I do expect to supplement my meals with them. But you have to have the time, and you have to be at the right place, and you have to know what you're doing to catch
Something like the JMT, there is a penalty for carrying all this extra gear. So I did notice when I got to MTR in 2014, there were fishing rods in the hiker barrels, which tells me people said, screw it, I'm not carrying this, I'm not fishing much, and they got rid of them. So make sure you know what you're doing, because otherwise you're gonna be carrying fishing gear for 200, 220 miles. And when I did my hike, I brought my gear, and we were planning on fishing at the very end, because some of the best fishing that I like for the Goldens is from about uh, Ray Lakes to, to the end. There's a lot of Goldens in there, they're fun to catch, and delicious deep. But uh, we had a storm coming in, so we had to rush through, and we hiked about 40 miles the last two days and skipped all the best fishing places. So I carried my gear the whole way, and I never fished. So keep that in mind. Uh, we were planning on having a big fish fry at Guitar Lake, which has some really nice golden hybrids in it. So, uh, and we did it in 17 days, and I was too tired and did, they're too lazy to fish when I got into camp. So, uh, if you're doing a fast hike, think twice about bringing gear. If you're going to do a long 21 day or so hike, you'll have plenty of time to fish, or you have to schedule in time to fish. So. Uh, okay, let's go on to some of my other uh, tackle that I use. All right, quick break from uh, fishing, just to show you what a pretty spot I'm at right now. Uh, sometimes it's hard to look around while you're looking for those fishing holes in the water where the fish might be sitting and waiting. But it's just really pretty out here. I get distracted pretty easily. But I just wanted to show you a couple of things where I'm fishing right now. Uh, here, I'm actually in the South Cascade mountain range, right, right near the Sierra. And wherever there's water, a lot of times in the spring you'll get these cool butterflies that just hang out around wet areas. Can't see them yet. There, where are they? Right there. You know, they'll start flying here in a sec. <laughs> They're really cool. And look at these wildflowers that are out in the springtime. These are tiger lilies. See why they call them tiger lilies, see the spots. Just spring in the mountains. It's beautiful, but let's get back to fishing. There's fish to be had out there. All right, some more about tackle. Uh, I'm a spin fisherman, but I own a fly rod, and I use a fly rod to catch fish with a fly rod, even in the backcountry, but I don't claim to be a fly fisherman. I'm terrible at it. So. If you have a spinning rod, that doesn't mean you can't use flies to catch fish. In fact, I've caught more fish on this rig setup I'm going to show you than probably any other method in, in the Sierra Lakes. Uh, and this is with a fly. So what you got here, you have these bobbers here. And there's a hole in it. You fill them up with water. And they slide onto your line. They're held in place with a swivel. And then you tie a leader onto your swivel, uh, depending, I usually go three or four feet. And at the end, you put your fly. And that is what's called a California mosquito fly. Uh, pretty small. Your tackle should be small. The fish you're fishing for are pretty small. I think this is a, like a 14 California mosquito. And you can use other ones that imitate mayflies or grasshoppers. If you look around, if you're really good, you can kind of imitate the insects. Stoneflies, maybe if you're fishing in a stream. Caddis, uh, larva that are, we call them rock rollers, or these little larvae in, in stream beds. You see them in lakes too. So, but ca California mosquito, if the fish are rising early morning in the evening on lakes, they're usually rising out of your reach. So what you gotta do is get your line out there. So this acts as a weight and when a fish bites on this, they don't pull on the, see there's play on that, so they, you get better action, they're pulling directly on the fly. You throw this out there as far out in the lake as you can, a slow retrieve where you're seeing rises in the lake, almost guarantee you'll catch fish if the fish are rising. If they're not rising, don't use this setup. That's when you're gonna switch to, uh, to bait and fish on the bottom, as the fish are down deeper, or lures. I usually fish lures, I prefer lures. Now, uh, this setup, if you're, if you're bait fishing a lake, I use the exact same setup, except at the end, I'm using a, a, a small hook. I, again, I'm, I'm using like a number 10 
12 salmon egg hook or uh, bait holder hook. And again, same exact setup, except here, I'm using an egg sinker that has a hole in it. And the idea is that sinks to the bottom, your line usually floats up or away from the weight. And when a fish pulls, they don't pull on your weight. So you can see when you're getting a bite. So you don't need a lot of lures in the Sierra. So I already showed you the Panther Martin. This is a yellow version with a silver blade. These things are great. I catch tons of fish on these. Uh, another type of fly that you can use in a stream or in a lake behind a bobber. This one is, uh, this is called a woolly bugger. They come in multiple colors. Uh, this one looks more like a grasshopper. So there's a lot of different flies. You don't need too many different kind of flies. I catch fish on these. All black sometimes works. So those are good. The only other two lures I ever bring with me, and they're the only ones that are necessary, are, uh, these are called Thomas's Buoyants. Uh, for whatever reason, the coloring, this is a good color to use. Fish love these. And cast masters. I love cast masters because they live up to their name because you can just throw them way out there. A lot of times the fish in these lakes are out of your reach, but these go a long way. That's the other advantage of using really lightweight new line. Buy quality stuff. You're only going to do this trip once in your lifetime most likely. So buy really good line and really good tackle. Don't go cheap on the tackle. These are about four bucks each. So, and the way to fish lures is keep them down deep. Unless the fish activity tends to be closer to the surface, you want them, you want them down deep. So you got to kind of try different levels till you find out what, what works. Now you'll see these have these big old treble hooks. When fishing in the backcountry, I do two kinds of fishing. I do fishing for food, <coughs> where I want to catch food and keep it, so I don't care if I hurt the, hurt the fish. Uh, so when I'm dinner fishing, I'll leave the treble hooks on. If I'm fishing for sport, at the very least, take a pair of these surgical scissors and pinch down the barb. You just go onto the barb and pinch it down. That way you can catch and release the fish without injuring them. Better yet, remove that treble hook altogether and put a single hook with a pinch barb. So please, please don't just catch a ton of fish and, and just let them go and injure them. If you, if you got the barb on them, you're gonna injure the fish when you take it off. So be careful about that. And I do, I actually bring these along because this way I'm not touching the fish. I can get my, get this right on the hook, right near the lip. And with, if, if there's no barb, I can just hook this on and turn it, slips right out without minimal injury to the fish. Bring the fish out of the water, wet your hands first. I do it right in the water. So unless you're eating them, get them out of the water. Some people, I actually caulk them on the head of a rock immediately to put them out of the misery. You can keep them on a, a stringer. I don't bring a stringer in the back country. I use a branch or something like that. Keeps them fresh for a while, but I like to just caulk them on the head. As far as uh, a knife for cleaning your fish or anything, use a multi-tool that you can use for other things in the back country. I bring a very tiny, small knife for fishing purposes. This is what I would use on the JMT. It's a tiny Leatherman. Micra it's called. It's got some tweezers, a screwdriver, and a tiny little blade. That's all you'll need to clean fish. You just slit the gut. I uh, uh, hope I catch fish. I may I'll show you how to clean a fish. I haven't caught anything yet today. That's, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. So uh, it's a pretty lightweight knife. Even this is heavy. Uh, you can just get a single little blade. I like this to, I'll use this for cutting tent cord or whatever. There's other uses for it. So go small with a knife. Now if you're thinking about hand lining out there, do it. I've seen people do a setup with just line and throw it out there. I'm pretty sure it's legal with one, one single. You can only have one line though. Uh, I don't recommend it. But it is illegal unless you have one of these. The California fishing regulations require you have a fishing license. I just bought this last year's. Uh, it was $47 last year. I think it was $48 this year. I have this year's too, by the way. I always, always follow the regulations. Uh, and if uh, you're just visiting California, you're not gonna use it a lot. You can get like, I believe a 10 day license and you put the range of uh, days you're gonna fish. But if you're gonna do something like the JMT, just get the whole, the whole license. All right, that's about it for tackle, uh, except for what you carry it in. This is my whole tackle box for the JMT. I stick it all in a plastic bag. 
One side's lures, one side's flies, hooks, and, and weights. Uh, so, again, the best the best time to fish. This is the biggest hook I will ever bring on the JMD. Something about that size. This is a bat, that's a size eight bait holder hook. But I I wouldn't use something like that very very often. Uh, so, yeah, I'm gonna keep forgetting what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, obviously the best time of the days to fish are early morning and sunset, which is convenient when you're doing the JMT because that's when you'll probably be in camp. So uh, midday fishing and on streams, you're probably okay most of the time. Some of these lakes are so easy, they're, they're biting all the time, but you'll know right away if they're not biting. All right, so I finally caught a couple of little rainbow trout. You see they're on a stick because I didn't bring my stringer down there because my other spot, I wasn't doing very good wasn't getting any bites. So here's another tip. If you're not catching any fish, try a different spot. And typically, I'm, I'm car fishing today, so there's, these are accessible by road. I hiked in a quarter mile where the stream veered away from the road, and I went to that hole right there. That's where I caught the two fish. There's nobody here. It was hard to get to, bushwhacking. I'm dirty, I had cuts in my leg. But I got two fish. So, this is Hat Creek, by the way. We're a pretty area in Northern California. So I like to get away from the crowd. So all you gotta do is go away from the parking spots and the easy accessible areas and you get to some pretty school, cool spots. All right, so you've caught your fish. This is a little guy, this is a rainbow. Looks small, but on the back country, that's some good eat. So, if you haven't cleaned the trap before, this is why you use that little knife. Just go right in the anus, make a slice up to the gills, and slice the gills like this. So there's a hole, you can reach into where you just sliced all the way through, like that. Pull it all out, you pull out the gills, the guts and everything. That's why I like trout. They're really easy to clean. It's a little come up very easy on that one. So, I was worried about guts. If you're out in the backcountry, these need to be treated just like poop. They need to be buried eight inches in soil, 200 yards from a water source or from camp. So the net last step is there's this big vein in the back of this, take your thumb, push it all the way through. Now it's pretty clean. Rinse it off in the water. And you're good to go. Now, I usually will cut the head off too because you're not gonna have a lot of room in your little pot. So there's your trout. You can even cut the tail off if you want. So that's ready to eat. So that's it. I'm gonna do a separate video on how to how to cook them, different ways to cook them in the back country. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching and tight lines.